Hello, this is Paul Stevens, and uh, this is the Wildlife Weekly from the Arundel Wetland Centre. Here we are at the Arundel Wetland Centre, and I am standing in the My Vatten exhibit. And this is the place where one of my team, Terry Clements, found the great silver water beetle. It was very fortuitous that uh, Terry actually found the beetle out, out here. Uh, obviously there's uh, a lot of our uh, rare ducks here, the long-tailed ducks, the scaly side of Maganza, which would probably have found it quite a tasty morsel. Luckily he found it uh, on the bank side uh, and called me up and uh, we rescued it for, uh, from this exhibit. So this was a, a female uh, great silver water beetle. Uh, which was probably fine trying to find new habitat um, to drop into. Unfortunately it dropped in through the netted aviary um, and it's very difficult for uh, a flying insect of this size to then uh, get back out through the netting. So it was obviously almost like a, a bit of a water beetle trap really in here. Right here we are uh, on the top end of our wetlands discovery area. This is where our boats uh, tour our visitors around looking at the wetland wildlife. Now it was out here uh, a few weeks ago that um, we were doing our wildlife weekly column um, mainly looking at uh, newly emerging damselflies and dragonflies, things like the uh, black tail skimmer, uh, the red eyed damselflies, azure damselflies, blue tails, so a whole host of things. Uh, when suddenly we came across the holy grail of dragonflies, especially here at Arundel, the club tailed dragonfly, Gomphus vulgatissimus. Now we've had David Chelmick, um, for, who's president of the uh, British Dragonfly Society, uh, out here looking at our site. He came uh, several years ago when we had a sighting of a male club tailed here before. Gomphus, it's a very strange insect. Only in Sussex does it breed on the Arran. It doesn't breed on the Ada, and it doesn't breed on the Cookmere, or doesn't breed on the Ouse. And we think one of the reasons is that it, the Arran has a very long tidal flow, which slows the flow of the whole river down, and you get a very, very muddy bottom. And Gomphus relies, larvae, they live deep in the mud. The only time I've ever found Gomphus larvae on the Arran is in deep, deep mud, and they live there, come out at night to feed, and go back deep in the mud. If you have too strong a flow, you would lose the insects. So we, I think that's the main reason that we have Gomphus on the Arran, is because of the very deep, muddy bottoms. Now, when the adult males are mature, they are green and black. They start off yellow and black when they emerge, but become green and black. And then when they're green and black fully adult, they go back to the river to hold territory to search for females. And I think that's one, the one that Paul and you found last week was resting in this area, literally waiting for a female to turn up. We only hope that he found one. Well, here we are at our newly established butterfly garden. This was uh, three beds that we planted up with native species that will either attract butterflies to nectar uh, or to lay eggs on for their caterpillar food plant. So what can we expect to see at this time of year? Well, we've got a lot of emerging butterflies, things like peacock, uh, brimstone, red admiral, small torch shell. So a whole host of different things um, really on the wing at this time of year. Butterfly conservation are again running their big butterfly count um, and this is something you can get involved in as, as well as planting food plant for butterflies you can actually count uh, what is occurring in your garden or, or your local patch of countryside. If you visit uh, the wetland centre you can pick one of these up uh, and get involved in this national survey. A very exciting opportunity to get to know some of your more common butterflies. So if you really want to find out what else is out here on the reserve, check out our website, uh, the Wildlife Sightings, or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs>